Okay, so I'm Daria Safash. That's not actually my real name. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a name that I used when I was living in Turkey, but this is just a name that I'm comfortable that I've been using mm -hmm. for writing for uh, some time now. So I just kind of use this name across all my social platforms. Um, I'm mainly, I want to say I'm mainly a writer because I write most of, I, I write a lot every day, like my um, private journal. And then I started this public business journal thing on um, Medium. And then I copy them over to Substack. I also have a newsletter that I haven't really written anything for for the past. It's been two weeks now. And I write at least two articles. I publish two articles a day. I definitely write a lot every day, so... And nice. I also, I'm also a community builder. That part I'm going to leave blank for now because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot about it. And I've recently started this podcast, uh, Idea Mastery Podcast, because I've been meet I've been meeting really really cool people, and I figured that it would be really awesome to actually record our conversation because there's. I, th I think we can find some value in it, the, the things that uh, we talk about between, you know, me and my guests, me and my friends, you guys are my friends, so, and I'm pretty <laughs> much using the podcast to get over, I still, ha I'm still, uh, I'm still at a level, I'm still a bit camera shy, and I know mm. I kind of stutter sometimes when I get too excited, and that, that's just, that's, that's, I feel that that's something that I can get over when I get more comfortable, so, that's that was awesome. my long intro, sorry. <laughs> That is pretty awesome. No, I'm really happy because uh, I'm really happy because it was for me, it's not new that you can socialize on social, right? But we found each other uh, on Medium uh, and I really loved everything you write. It's very authentic, very deep. It shows that somebody really, really, not somebody, but you really, really reflected on what are your goals why you why you do what you want to do and it has a very pleasant flow of you know here is the value you can take it or leave it this is this is how i think this is my life this is what you can do to get better writer to get better results on medium and from my perspective that is pretty awesome oh, and i am diana and I have been in IT for the last 15 years as a project manager, people leader. Then I became a CEO of a local branch here in Bulgaria of a Swiss company. I built the business from scratch from five years. And because of various reasons, uh, I decided that I would I have learned everything I need to know from building for building a businesses from scratch with somebody else's money, right? So I decided to build a business of my own and start worrying about money for a change. And me and my part partner, Jordan Parker, we help actually creators do exactly that, build a profitable business. So they have consistent income, so they don't rely only on the platforms and brand, sports, brand deals or sponsorships, but they really have something on their own to develop and rely on and to get to get consistent, a consistent money out of it so they can actually take a vacation for a while and have enough time to, to start their own projects. And personally, for me, I'm really big fan of anime. I play a lot of computer games. I read a lot. I also write on Medium. As as I said, uh, as I said, this is where we have, um, and this is where we met, and I love it. And to me, writing, it became really as an exercise to better express myself. I started writing because I was afraid that my communication to, towards my team is very stiff, very uptight and very heavy term. And I didn't want my team to feel, to feel like I'm speaking some other language, right? Because we, we needed to work together to achieve what we wanted to achieve. So I started writing to improve my communication. I fell in love with it. And I haven't stopped writing ever since. 
so yeah and it shows your experience in writing really shows in your articles there they're very concise but very value packed i always get to take it away a lot from your um from your um articles uh -huh, thank you the way you blend your own you don't go on and on about your own experience it's like bam 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 this is the experience and then unexpectedly it leads into like hey you know this is this is the value piece and then it ends it's just like little short nug nuggets of wisdom pretty much business so wisdom. Cool to say thank you thank you i, I was aiming for it but i didn't know if i if i managed so yeah thank you thank Aww. you for that it's funny how like we can't really see like i mean it's difficult to see like what what we're doing right until we talk to another person yes exactly i mean everyone no matter where you are at at your journey right uh everyone has doubts and we are the most terrible judges of ourselves and of our content mm, you know i had this mm, i had this story where a colleague of mine was leaving the team for reasons and she she called me to say goodbye and then she told me you know what please don't start writing and i was like shocked because i wrote back then on on linkedin uh, i did articles uh, for our blog post i i wasn't on medium just yet but she never commented she never liked she never you know told me that she's reading and what happened is that her english teacher told her look, you know, you need to find inspiring content in English. And then she was going on and on about, hey, I was reading every one of your articles. They're very inspiring. They helped me a lot, not only with the language, but really to get to know myself better, to, to, put, um, to put better goals in front of myself. And at that point in the conversation, I just started crying, right? So this was my, this was my biggest lesson. Your content isn't boring. You need to write and don't judge how good your content is. Other will judge it and please publish even if you don't think it's worth it because you never know who you're helping. So, so yeah. I think this is compared to where we are now. Like I'm just, I mean, besides of, you know, me and your writing experience, well, whatever little writing experience I have anyway, like in the, I guess in the grander scheme of thing, like like all of humanity wise, like, you know, people back then didn't have the education level, whoops, mostly didn't have the uh, literacy to write or yes, they can express themselves, but it's not like where we are now, where like where I guess what I'm trying to say is that with pretty much just a few clicks of a button, we can publish something that the whole world can actually has the ability to get to whereas before you know before internet before airplanes before vehicles like we were we we didn't have this we were pretty much confined by the community yes. by our immediate surrounding like our ideas and everything so we're really living yes. in a very interesting time once that now we're more open well at least for my case anyway once I got over the fear of hitting the publish button for writing, right? I'm still, I'm still kind of scared for like videos for some odd reason. It's different for me for videos. Mm -hmm. But once I got over the fear of hitting the publish button, it's like I, I was very surprised by the amount of support and positivity that is available. That's actually available out there. Like I mean, I'm like, yes. where was I? Where like what? What was I thinking before? So. Yeah, I I think you're touching upon I think you're touching upon ev um, something very important that never never in history we had the opportunity to touch someone's heart soul or brain that easily right we had our own communities and we shared stories within those communities because stories is really how we learn. But now we have the option to learn from stories from all over the world and stories of people we wouldn't have normally meet. Because even, as you said, even if I take the plane to 
to, to another country in Europe or to the States, it wasn't guaranteed that you and me will, you know, meet because I would probably go for a different reason there. Of course, when you travel, you go also to see the, uh, to feel the people, but mostly to see some sightseeing and eat all of the foreign food you can, right? right. So, yes. so uh, but, but I believe what you're saying is very, very crucial because we can finally fight loneliness. Because people who have the best stories in their communities are often, not always, but the most lonelier, the, the loneliest people, right? Because oh, if you so have the imagination, if you have the, the curiosity to explore, to act, to understand the world, then you are already a bit different than than people who who have their you know traditional path we, and nothing wrong with the traditional path you know everyone is free to take whatever path but you know in every community there are norms and good storytellers are those who break the norms to make a good story at the first place or at least this is how i think about it and now we have the ability to connect with all those norm breakers or status quo challengers from all over the world and I'm, I'm pretty much stunned. There are billions, I believe. I wrote, uh, I, I read some statistics, but they were million. There are millions of creators out there, you know, on the internet, as you say, but they make up to two percent of the world population. Only two percent. Wow. Only two percent. And now we can connect to those people who are brave enough or for some reason are ready to go and say, hey, this is my opinion. This is how I think about stuff. This is my experience. This is this is how I see the world, how I see my audience. And I believe it's awesome. You know, there are a lot of people who would put a stigma on the internet as with any new medium, right? There were, uh, my favorite anecdote on the topic is that where first books were mass produced because they were written in paper uh, books were deemed as something that we will al al alienate alienate how do you pronounce this uh, word english alien that we alienate. alienate yes alienate uh, people from one another because everyone was reading a book now everyone is like get off the internet and read a book and i'm like you know people so so uh, for me we live in the best time of history when it comes to opportunities to connect to make friends and to learn and we learn so much for free it's painful i am i am so with you and like it actually blew my mind away at the beginning of what you just said about how you know I didn't think of because I didn't think of it like this. Like I didn't. I mean, I knew there were storytellers. I knew storytellers wouldn't like everybody. I mean, we all can be storytellers at like yes. you know at different stages, but not like as a. I, I don't want to say career because it's not just about creating like as like like your main thing being a storyteller. But that's what creators are, right? That that's their main thing is they're actually yes. just storytellers. But I didn't see it where the reason why these people are obsessed obsessed yes obsessed with storytelling is because they've always been so different from their immediate surroundings i never really put those two together but yes yeah. that's exactly what it is that's so true i i do have this like i i use obsession because i think you were the one that said something about like being was that you that said something about it in the comments, either in on Medium or X that like you kind of have to have some kind of obsession for writing or something says some, someone said. No, it writing. wasn't me, but I actually agree with the statement. Okay. Obsession is really, obsession is, you don't need motivation. You need obsession because if you break down motivation, there are three pillars of my favorite model because a lot of creators struggle struggle with inconsistent motivation, right? But motivation simply boils down to, first of all, the purpose. 
And if you're obsessed with creating, with expressing yourself, you know, um, not not necessarily with the vanity metrics, though though they they can add to the purpose. But if you're obsessed, you already have a purpose. You get up and you're like, okay, what am I telling today? What am I teaching today? You know, how am I expressing myself today? So that's a very strong obsession. Is a very strong um, purpose. And the second to our mastery. So a lot of practice in what you do. You know, you 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 mentioned that you are scared um, a bit uh, from uh, from camera, but I love how you battle that. You know, doubt. I I wouldn't even call it fear because you're now because you're now like okay. If I doubt my camera presence, I would get in front of my camera and I will master my camera presence, which is exactly the way you get mastery via action, via repetition, via doing things you don't feel that comfortable with repetitively. And the last part is autonomy. So autonomy means that you are free to make your own creative choices. And that is a bit of double-edged sword I would say, because when it comes to when it comes to autonomy, of course, you can tell all the stories in the world, but there are some st storytelling rules, right? There is, um, there is, you have to have a good hook that has to set the right expectations, and you have to deliver on that hook because otherwise it's a clickbait, and there has to be, you know, some value for the people that read. And I believe when it comes to motivation. Um, some creators struggle with autonomy because they're like, okay, it looks like a template. It looks like I have rules now for expressing myself to, to perform. But when you are obsessed, you know, with doing this, with getting it to, to your people, actually, to people who vibe with you, to people who, uh, who, um, who can get you, basically, uh, it will obsession will overarch so your purpose will overarch the doubts on autonomy and mastery so i really like obsession as a concept i love it i love how you just described everything <laughs> i wonder though like i mean i don't know about for other others not just creators i don't know about for others who are also obsessed with certain aspects that they want to improve but for me my obsession comes from like a uh, a place of like deep pain mm. because it hurts so much where because I felt like I've been silenced for most of my life right because I've been yeah. it just I just never like I didn't really have I mean I had like I had chances of expressing myself but it was also like there's here's the chance and then bam haha you don't have the chance anymore over and over again that's how I was brought up right and then I was never, I never get to feel how, I, f I never get to feel how it feels to actually open up myself and be okay with it. And the part of, of about opening my, up myself is, is the expression part. So because I feel like I'm so lacking in that, that's my pain point. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that I have to run against. So that's where my obsession come from. But I, I wonder if there are other like, if there are other reasons for people to pe become obsessed with a certain thing other than pain first of all i i'm i'm i don't know what to say but i admire the courage now because for someone who have been punished and punishment doesn't mean beaten right punishment means trumped or shut down or don't overstep stay in your lane you know that that makes my blood boil especially coming from authority because for someone who got punished for expressing themselves and now you know obsessed with expressing themselves in that way i really respect and admire that and i really think that you should never stop expressing yourself because there is so much to learn right very you're you strike me as a very brave person who is like i will not sit and accept i will act and i i am fascinated by that because for me that is 
I was, I have a different experience, right? People try to shut me down, but then I would lash back until they hear me. And oh, it's just a different setting and different, how to say, different um, way. But, uh, you know, to to have this as your starting point and exploding with creativity on all the platforms with helping other creators you know find their community with really expressing your true self because your writing strikes me as very authentic i have wild respect for that kudos oh, first of all and i still feel like i mean obviously it's a process it's a never-ending process um i just feel like there's also there's always this itch with me, which is it's it's not really like a good feeling, right? But it's the same itch or pain that's driving me to keep trying to figure out different ways to like write things or well express things, let's say. So mm -hmm. it's funny because um I wanted to be like I wanted to be a YouTuber, right? Just a few years back and I didn't know how to do it. I didn't write. I mean, I didn't know. I just wanted I just wanted to have a YouTube channel because I like the idea of, you know, like um hey, because at that time I actually had a business selling physical stuff and I at the, the yeah. first few years was fun. You know, you go shopping or you buy stuff online. It's the shopping and then you're flipping the stuff that you shop fun. But then eventually I'm like, you know what? It's not I'm not really, this is not, this has nothing to do with my core passions. So eventually yeah. I became burnout and I started looking for different ways right now. It's like, hey, you know, this YouTube thing sounds good. If it works out, I can be anywhere in the world and still do this. Perfect. Because I missed my days when, when I get to travel when I was in my 20s, right? And then I didn't know what to do. I, I remember the first uh, YouTube video that I posted. It took me like all week. I, I was... Uh, I edited down this these clips from when me and my friends went to New Mexico and I couldn't do voiceovers, right? Because I couldn't express myself at all. It was that weird. Like I couldn't like I, at that point in time, I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even do like a regular voice memo, like a recording. That's how yeah. like stuck I was. But then that's, the, but yeah, that's where I started from there. I went to, I started writing because I heard that writing would help your articulation. But yes. when I first started writing, I was I wasn't writing like how I am now at all. Like now I'm actually getting closer to expressing things, what I want to express, plus kind of giving some kind of hopefully giving some kind of value while I'm doing that. But before I was literally doing I was literally I was reading philosophies, but I was like trying to like I was I was pretty much if if you read my articles from before will you would think that it's AI generated like now nah, because we have AI now. That's how freaking boring it was. But that was but it's like, uh huh. But it's it's like with any skill, you know, to to master a skill, as I said, you need to practice it. And the more you practice it, uh, the more you, uh, the more you, uh, the better you get at it. And I have a similar problem. My first articles are boring as hell. And also, once I sat down to write, you know, that was two years ago. And I, first of all, for me, it's a little bit more difficult because English is not a native language. So, uh, so it's, I know how some things are called in Bulgarian and then I have to search uh, in English and then and then the words are very strange because, you know, there is no one to one translation. So that's one problem. But the other problem was that stunned me. I wanted to write about a book. And, you know, when you read a good book, you, you are left with a feeling okay, now what am I gonna supposed to do with my life? And you're relieving the world of the book and you are really there because it was so good of a book. I don't know why I write a lot. And I couldn't name that emotion. I could feel the emotion and I couldn't name it. And I was trying, you know, this is how I got unstuck. Jordan, Jordan gives a lot of tips when, when people get stuck with the writing. He was like, write 10 names for that emotion. If you don't, if you don't have a title, write ten titles, and you will like some. And um, you know that's 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 exactly what I wanted to say to you that with practice we get better. We can get better 
at everything if we practice consistently and especially for creators i want to make a point that consistently doesn't even mean every day it means regularly it means that every day three times a day four times a day you do and practice your skill and then because you can't judge your own skill because you're subjective and you would either be over critical or over optimistic you ask for feedback and i find it brilliant that you can you don't necessarily have to hire five mentors right with different perspective on your expression you can just post and people will tell you and if they say nothing then might be might you want might want to try a different angle and the other thing that that is very important and what i discovered is whenever i had to explain leadership right and because i was coaching my leadership team i was leading a team of leaders and i had to teach them how to lead and i knew very well from my experience what they need to do but i couldn't explain it for uh, for my life but I caught myself that the first leader I ever onboarded, I onboarded very sloppily. I explained things very sloppily. There were a lot of back and forths. And I'm grateful that my colleague was so patient with me as a leader because, you know, I, I wasn't and they, they, they never gave me the feedback. But I was like, OK, Diana, you can do better. You can teach better. And then the, fi the fifth leader I onboarded, I had no problem. So the very repetition of explaining and dissecting and separating an idea from different angles practically made make the expression of the idea really really easy now i can explain leadership with you know some aspects of leadership because leadership is fast and very abstract topic if you are not doing it every day but i can explain more, most concepts with two sentences that actually make sense that's beautiful i'm not there yet but that's where i would love to be at like really explaining most concepts in just two sentences that's beautiful that's mastery and I still am not a good writer and I am very confident about that but that's that's the whole point that we continue write to be better and we continue and we continue writing to actually help people like us because for me the most important part of a story is what I told my leaders you know I told them let's make new mistakes and here are my mistakes so you can invent your own and that's the whole point. That's how we learn. That's beautiful. Here are my mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's even better than that's even better. That's sometimes even better than only talk about your wins, right? We actually we for me anyway, we actually learn better when we fail. So why wouldn't yes. we learn better when we look at other people's failures too? Yes. That's a really exactly. good way to put it. Wow. And that's why I say it was, it made me, at least I got very, very positive feedback. You know, when I left my company, they did make me 50 pages uh, of goodbye card. And everybody was like, thank you for being awesome with very specific positive feedback, you know, to me as a leader. And I believe it's partly because I talked a lot about my mistakes because I really didn't want people to repeat them. And when I now talk to creators, um, because everyone now in the creative space is practically opening with, look at my followers, look at my success, look at my whatever, and that should be there. There is a place and time for that. But when I would advise most creators to use success to attract and use mistakes to connect, because especially when you are a successful creator, I hit one problem and that and that problem I call it's easy for you to say, right? Yes. Because somebody comes to me with an escalation and I'm the CEO at this point. I have all the leverage, all the decision making power to to solve that problem. Right. And I'm like, OK, this is the solution. You know, you can try it. And they're like, no, that's easy for you to say. So practically, when you have a certain level of status and if you're a big creator, you have that status. Right. People are intimidated by you more or less. Now, 
whatever you say you would hit sooner or later easy for you to say problem you know you have all the following you have the you have the views you have the team you have everything right and this is the place and this is why it's important to talk about your mistakes to talk about your failures so people who look up to you in in one way or another feel again that you're on eye level that you're both humans because in the end of the day that's all who we are we are humans right yeah we don't want to have that high and low ranking like yes yeah not like that because it, it creates disconnect that's very true but also would you think would you say that most people or i don't know if it's most people would you say like an uh, an amount of people wouldn't want to talk about their failure because you know it's failure it's embarrassing we don't want to talk about it i mean it's normal oh, yes. to not it's like, a big, it's a big aspect. it's a big barrier it's a big barrier because we are wired our society is wired to celebrate success right look at this person and look at this uh, look at their a title look at their status uh, but i have worked with top five percent of people talking ceos software engineers you know uh, hr experts and stuff like that in eight countries and they're all human and they also have their mistakes and it is very dangerous to think that this person who who you look up to never made a mistake because then the comparison game can uh can smash you and people don't want to talk about mistakes and including when i because i was the ceo out of you know we were working in a holding and there were uh eight other companies and they were like ah diana you're apologizing for your mistakes or will people find you credible you know there were some kind of thoughts and I actually told them that talking about mistakes is really the ultimate, the ultimate show of confidence. Because there is a way to talk about mistakes, right? So you you talk about mistakes you learned something from. So you don't go and say, hey, I'm the, the worst person, blah, blah. No, you, you look at what you, uh, we look at the mistake. You don't sugarcoat it, right? You say, I, I screw up. And then you are like, okay, and how did how did this impact myself, my team, my family, whatever, people in my, as you say, immediate surroundings? And then you start thinking how to fix it, you know? And then you fix it in the end of the day because mistakes have consequences. And when you fix it, you start thinking how to never repeat it. And when you per when you express that journey of the mistake in front of other people first they get first they get the feeling okay she's a person like me second they're like a second they're like okay that sounds really scary but if there is a way even of that very scary mistake with very scary con consequences maybe the way it's out of everything so you give inspiration with that and finally the learning right this is how this is how you don't make my own mistake. So I believe it's people don't like to talk about mistakes, but I believe this is the ultimate leverage every successful person has talking about their mistakes, talking how how they fixed it, talking talking how they would never repeat it again, so others can learn. I think there's also another as you're saying uh, talking about the uh emitting of mistakes right um i don't you remember like i think well i quit doing it for the past few days right so i started this like public business journal thing just uh, originally i thought i would just write you know nightly at the end of the night whatever but then i thought i could add like at making little youtube shorts to to summarize what i wrote down which was fun for the first like two days until i hit this like it wasn't so much about like, a, yes, it was actually, I'm trying to deny. I hit like an emotional brick wall, but <laughs> usually the emotional brick wall comes from something too, right? So anyway, when I hit some kind of brick wall, I felt like I didn't want to talk about that. And it's really difficult to talk about your mistakes as like 
live. I think it, do you think it's yeah. more, do you think it's easier to talk about your mistakes say, after you have digested it? Because I kept feeling like it's two different yes. animal, like, yes. Yeah. When you're going through the mistake, like you don't, it's difficult. Like, especially when a camera is like, even there's no, even though there's no one around me when there's the camera and I know that I'm going to have to post it. It's like, ah, so. No, no. I mean, I mean, mistakes have value if you learn something from them, right? Value for others. Uh, I believe you should talk about going through your own mistakes with a mentor and with people who can help you. That's perfectly how to say. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but I wouldn't say you have to. You can if you feel comfortable, but if it's in your case very uncomfortable, and I can get that if you're reliving through a mistake now and you still haven't figured it out, I wouldn't talk about it because you still haven't you still haven't distilled the learning, right? right. And because I haven't because I haven't processed or distilled, ah, there's a stain bug trying to fly towards me <laughs> sorry <laughs> i don't um, see anything I, it, like, okay. it, uh, I waved it off <laughs> it was flying towards my face i was like no <laughs> anyway wait sure sure yeah i was like yeah <laughs> but uh yes i think i think you're absolutely right like there's no actually it's probably not much of a point if i haven't processed a mistake by figuring out a, a solution yet right so it's like if i if i if we look at an article, right, usually, yes, we usually talk about a mistake first, but there needs to be a solution at the end. Because if there's no solution, we also we feel cheated. It's like, what did I just freaking read? Like, a rant, yeah, you, you know, like, or something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Story needs their uh, story needs their hero a superhero landing right people don't like unhappy endings and the very few stories I've read with unhappy uh, with unhappy ending were written after the author has written I don't know tons of other stories so people need their happy ending people need their inspiration you know I if I have to talk about an ongoing mistake now. Uh, in front of my audience, I would probably say, hey, I'm I'm struggling with this. Anybody know any solution? But that is different. That's not an article. That's a request for help mm -hmm. and request to spar with my my community if I have it, you know, and that's why communities are so, so awesome because you can say, hey, I'm struggling with this and your people, your inner circle of people who you, uh, who trust you, uh, will be like okay I know a solution and there will be somebody in that crowd who who have been living through the same true because people in your community are connected with to you or your uh, to you and your content for a reason and one thing yeah. I also notice in community is that like besides of you know just on YouTube where there's all kinds of people or or, or anything else that, that that's not like a more close knit let's call it a more specific community people could can not connectors but creators can actually get a lot of ideas from their own community yeah like, like bouncing ideas like back and forth so with the right crowd exactly exactly and i like the idea of a paid community and i will tell you why most people would be would jump because you know community is something so beautiful so you know so um, charming in its ways hey we are people we think alike but i like the idea of the paid community and of course you don't have to go to blow away the price uh, and to be that exclusive with it because when it's paid you get the people with high intent there you know i paid to be there might be, you know, $20, might be $50, might be $200, but I paid per month. And that means I'm going to be present. I, I bet, you know, I bet on my intent to be active, to share, to bounce ideas. And because on, on free communities, and we, me and Jordan had an experience with one, uh, on free communities, uh, people just say hi, you know, but then, but then they are not that active because 
you know they have other things to do they join it for the idea and then they they forgot it so to make really an intentional community when you bounce back and forth ideas when when it's a life when it's of course you need some moderation and let's not lie ourselves about that so but you also need people with high intent and the first you know the first thing to guarantee that intent is hey i will pay to be there because when people pay to be there they they don't want to lose money in the end of the day we are loss aversion creatures so we don't want to lose money and it's the same like i had two friends one of them decided to make a free internet fitness challenge the other one hired a coach a coach guess who was more consistent coach. guess who was <laughs> no right. who was coach <laughs> yeah exactly but the person who paid actually actually you know continue taking care of themselves via exercising and the other person was like oh, whatever it's free i don't lose anything if i don't show up today or if i uh, do something else so uh and that's the that's the thing about the community that you want active contributors right and active contributors are contributors with high intent they 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 went to that community or something can be uh, for the access to the creator, can be for, you know, beating loneliness, can be for, hey, uh, I want to discuss this topic and tell my friends don't don't want to discuss it and they're sick, sick and tired of me talking about this, whatever, you know, but there has to be an intent and there has to be declared intent. Wow. You just, you just summed up the whole, the soul of a... I keep wanting to say closed community, but it's not closed. It's just more specific type of communities other than yes. like an ex community or medium community. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm actually, I'm curious about, I'm very curious about your offer. Um, I know you work with a lot of creators and, um, you do you help them you do build websites for them right that's only one part that's yes only one part. see that's the part that i was trying to, i'm trying to get to do you want to like tell me a little about it yeah sure so practically what we want to um what we do is um we talk to creators and work with creators that already have the attention that means uh, that means I, I loved how you phrased it in your own offer, that, um, 100k plus uh, plus creators, right? Uh, not exclusively, but it has to be substantial amount of uh, attention. And then practically what we do is uh, we help them create their own first digital product that is more that that is most often an info product like a course and we help them from you know figuring out doing their own market research because to to make a product that sells you need a market research then we uh, um, then we figure out the positioning and we figure out really what kind of problem are we solving what is the transformation that they can offer their audience based on their best skills and based on what they like to do and based on what people would pay for those three pillars right they they have to be there and then it's extensive coaching uh, um, as the other part of the offer so people in our program it's one-to-one -one program for the time being uh, have a weekly tasks and weekly calls with me and Jordan to unstuck them to help them produce the whole thing and the websites part is we build the entire technical infrastructure and the tech stack that they need in the most opti optimal way so that would include that would include the entire funnel so the entire journey of uh, of their clients and it's not it doesn't start and end with an with an website or with a website you know there are different strategies for the top of funnels then the middle of, um, then there are different strategy for the middle funnels and then there is also you know a lot of um a lot of infrastructural problems to solve when it comes to the to the very sweet and you know the narrowest <laughs> sadly part of uh, part of the funnel but our offer is really six months program you exit with marketable, sellable, 
products and with all the business skills that you need to repeat that model as often as you can. That's beautiful. Um, a lot of times when I see like, I don't know if we should call them like content coaches or whatever, they teach you a certain way, like whatever the way, I guess it's usually whatever way that the coach that has accomplished, but from just from me glancing at these offers, it seems like a lot of times that these are the one that that method is going to expire one day, let's say. Um, but what you have, what you seem to be offering is like a whole complete skill set where is where it is versatile, where you can transfer it into like yes. other future businesses. Yes. And not only, I mean, oh, in the end of the day, I'm careful not to promise sales, but in the end of the day, we want our our creators to start selling because our ultimate goal is to give them consistent income. So we do whenever, whatever, uh, you know, and it's coaching, technical assistance, business assistance, you know, marketing assistance, everything they need in that spectrum of coaching. That's That's why it's very individual to get their product to market and eventually sell it without selling because, you know, there are two different type of sales and I'm a fan of only one. But what is very important for me to underline here is I like that you frame it uh, as a wholesome skill set because social media and internet is only a medium for business. It's not business. And my blood boils when some, when some of the coaches out there say, you know what, get to that many followers and you will make money. No, money making skills and content creation skills are not necessarily the same. And yes, you will make money from the platform, from ad revenue, you know, if you uh, if you uh, qualify for their partnership criteria, but that doesn't mean you you are making the money. That means you have a job. So that's right. not a business. That's a job. Right. You're working for the platform, and the platform is very kind, boss. You know, it doesn't give you working hours. It doesn't give you a uh, headache. But it also doesn't give you consistent salary because uh, because then you depend on the views. And when you depend on the views, what you do? The reasonable, mathematically speaking, to you, you start producing more. And you start producing more, but you have only 24 hours a day. So even if you, even if you, and I know a bunch of creators who are working 14 hours a day, you know, to, to achieve to achieve, you know, this, uh, the income that they aim to, the next day the policy changes, as as it happens with Medium, yeah. and you get banned, right? And then there are the sponsors, and sponsors are not necessarily evil, but sponsors contact creators for brand deal with one sole purpose, to sell faster. Sponsors borrow the network of the creators, borrow their followers, their community, borrow the trust that they have and borrow the skills that creators have. Because, you know, if you if you build that much of attention, that means that you know how to get the message to your followers across. So sponsors want to sell faster and sponsors want to make profit, which means in three, as a principle, you know, I'm not I'm not saying, but which means as a principle, the less the less sponsors pay creators, the more profit they make. The later sponsors pay creator, so, you know, uh, they have more money until the product sales, which means, you know, again, sponsors aim to be cash positive or net cash positive, and creators can't wait, uh, can wait, you know, for a payment for six months, and then their landlady can knock on the door and ask, where is my rent? And she doesn't care that, you know, you're waiting a payment from a sponsor. So those kind of problems we want to solve. We want to make creators platform independent, sponsor independent, and by all means, you know, I'm not saying those are not two good ways to make money as a creator. I just want creators to have a third way that makes them independent, that makes them truly free, pr practically. So right. that's how I think about it. No, that's perfect. That is the, that's the, that is a truly free way to do it because you're, um, 
there's the community aspect. There's your the taking taking the reliance off of the platform. That's the main aspect. Yeah. Of yeah, freedom or financial freedom. Let's say. Let's be more specific. Yeah, financial freedom. Yeah, you know it. You know it also uh, there because you you had a business, right? You know that diverse income is the best way to is the best way to manage your own money and to be safe and calm for the future. So, yeah, and I haven't. I mean, like that's why that for me anyway that's why i wanted to get off of the um flipping physical item part because it, it's i still require time yes i can get better with hmm? you know like uh finding higher profit item and stuff but it's still it's still it still felt like i was still kind of tied to my own schedule i wasn't working full time yes yeah, i had yeah. a lot of free time but it was still it was still just not it so hopefully this whole um it's not just hopefully actually it's 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 happening it's it's been happening that this whole creator economy that's been developing that's in uh, that's springing up it's actually providing i don't think humanity has ever had this opportunity to be to have this level of wealth and freedom before yes yes it's awesome and the opportunities are limited uh, limitless because you have reach re-reach free to a global market because not everyone is creating but everyone is consuming everyone with an internet of course so you have enormous potential to find your to find your audience to find your future clients to find everyone because you know even the big creators even the big creators if you if you think about it what did mr beast beast do he opened chain of restaurants and he has chocolate and i tested the chocolate uh, i tested the chocolate already here uh, it tastes exactly like a chocolate from my childhood called kumalisa oh. but, <laughs> but you know um what um, uh, what does ali abdal does you know he has his books he has his you know, everyone who is popular and who is making, I believe, pretty solid money from the platforms, you know, because if you're Mr. Beast, you obviously don't struggle with inconsistency of ad revenue or uh, sponsors trying to, you know, kind of get the best out of you without giving their best. Maybe sometimes he doesn't have those problems, but he still makes the, his own products he still expands the business and he he is able to do that and give so much back you know i like how much he is giving back how much of the money go for charity and for for those initiatives that countries should be doing but they're you know neglecting so so yeah and to to um to your question this free reach to to an enormous market is a shift it's a global shift in uh in how we do business but it doesn't mean that also the fundamental principles changed now the websites for example uh that that you manage they are one convenient and very time saving a very time saving tool to sell to sell to many because now with the internet, you don't have to have calls with each and every one of your clients. So if it's a product, you just sell one too many, and then you have a good uh, then you have a good sales page. The copy is convincing. Hopefully, people are are you know uh, feel well landing there, so to say, feel well giving you money, and hopefully, you know they they enjoy the product and you know the product and the product production and producing a quality info product is also a problem because everybody thinks they can write a course and everybody is wrong because to write a really good course that not only shows the way to a transformation but in inspire people to take action based on it 
is also is also a skill a skill that my partner has because he has been teaching software engineers for 15 years he has been teaching beginners he had been has been teaching advanced people so you know it is there are limitless opportunities but it's not at, as easy to do it once alone and second as easy as some gurus preach out there i know i love the gurus oh my god you know they have to they <laughs> They pretty much have to say what they had, let the, what they've been saying, just to give people something, some kind of false hope. Yeah, and yeah. That's their job. <laughs> I mean, it's their business, you know. I don't like the business model because, because I I once even talked to to one person and I was like, okay, explain to me how number of followers translate to me making money, and he had a hard time explaining that, right? Because let's not lie to ourselves. Follower, followers, number of followers is a very easy dream to sell. Everybody wants that. You want that. I want that. You know, we want our followers to grow in numbers. Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you have it, you will make money. Right. That doesn't mean you will live well. You can have one million followers and you can still struggle to pay your bills. And that nuance is conveniently skipped by the by the growth gurus, which, which I don't like. I and agree. honestly, I had my first client, obviously Jordan had, uh, because we are in business together, you know, and we are going to marry soon. And it will be, you know, it's a good partnership, if you ask me. And, and I love him, but uh, I was so angry at the growth gurus that I closed my first client. And it will, it is a 10K program, 10K dollar program, so $10,000 program for six months at 300 followers in Twitter. Just to show that those number of followers and making money is not one and the same right followers and likes too those are just something that we can go hee hee i've grown today grown we don't yeah. know like, what kind of growth are you talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. great point well, thank you for being here today with us, dropping off tons and tons of value bombs. Um, it's always really, it's always really nice to talk to you, Deanna. And I'm sorry, I, I mispronounced your name a few days ago on like on the YouTube short. Not the short. Yeah. I said Don't that worry at all. I mispronounce yours, don't I? It's, <laughs> it's okay, so... and I still know you're talking to me, so yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah cool it was pleasure to talk to you uh, uh and uh, let's continue talking yeah we can. really your energy is um, you can cut or or leave it here but your energy is awesome i don't know why you're afraid to be in front of a camera but especially when you talk to people your energy is really really pleasant to be around i didn't 